Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer. What is going on, Entertainment? So, Tam comes out with another Hollywood Hot Topic. What Cardi B said, let me come in here and talk my shit really quick. Make sure y'all hit that like button. I'm exhausted. I don't want to. Yay. Yay. I'm just gone. I'm tired. All right. So, just, you know, hit that like button. That's all I ask. All right. Before I get started, uh, make sure you guys, of course, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what y'all think about this video. Okay. First, let's talk Diddy. First of all, I'm sick of hearing about this man. It's exhausting. I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm sick of the updates. It's very exhausting. Although, of course, I don't agree with anything that he did throughout this whole situation. I just feel like a lot of this information is being regurgitated, and we've heard it before, and people are bringing it up, especially with this Rodney lawsuit. I did a video on this lawsuit a month ago. Apparently, it's been updated. So with it being updated, there's a lot more um evidence shown as you guys can see here i did a video on it a month ago where i broke down the documents i will pin the link in the comments below so that way uh, you guys can see and read uh through it with me and in this document we saw that there was pink powder donuts i didn't know that powder donuts came in pink i said that's that's different that's crafty <laughs> That must that may, that must give you a new high, okay? Someone tweeted, "Damn, Diddy documents out Young Miami be doing powder donuts with him, acting like she innocent." They was wired up. So in the document, line eighty five said, "On another occasion, Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night, twenty twenty two, Mister Combs asked Mister Jones and DeForest Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. He asked them for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted them to do powder donuts with him." Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do the powder donuts with Young Miami. Now, after she, apparently she did it, she said, "I do a split for you, Daddy." Okay. Later on that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit workers from the booby trap on the roof. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still can't get over that. It's not funny, but. Really, a booby trap on a river? That's really shysty of you. Don't, that's, that's a low end, okay? Like, ugh. You're already the G5. Ladies and gentlemen, the booby trap on a river. The reviews ain't that good, okay? Mr. Jones did so, and Mr. Combs forced him to engage in uh, the acts with these workers. Now, line 85 to me, you mean to tell you he forced you into sleeping with those workers, Mr. Rodney? Although I believe a lot of the accusations that are against Diddy, but that he forced you? Mm. I'm just saying. Robert Greenhill, the accountant, would ensure the writing funds transfer cash payments to the workers. Frankie Santella, uh, Moy, Brandon, and KK would also be responsible for insurance payment to workers in cash. Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs workers and received payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendants' ongoing criminal operation. Okay? Now, I feel like a lot of people are bringing this up because they want to troll Young Miami. They feel as if she took it too lightly, this whole um, raid. I feel like people are doing this to really kind of get a reaction out of her. And for what we've seen so far, we haven't really seen a reaction out of her as of yet. One we've seen a reaction out of is uh, JT. So JT uh, clapped back at people sort of poking fun at this whole powder donut situation. Do I believe it? Yes. A lot of these celebrities do it. It's not like, oh, my God. I say it to kind of be funny, but they really do do powder donuts like on the regular. So it's nothing like shocking or groundbreaking. What was more shocking to me was the fact that she was one of the names enlisted as one of his SEX workers. That's to me more damaging than you doing powder donuts. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you just join the crew. So somebody tweeted uh, at JT, said, so this is where JT get that stuff from makes sense, makes perfect sense now. And it's an old video of JT snorting, and she's insinuating that JT was doing powder donuts while she was on Alive with um, Young Miami. So JT said, first of all, I was in a halfway house being tested every night. I went in. I explained this years ago. I never did powder donuts and it will never and will never do it. It actually destroyed my family. Y'all get on here making jokes about ish for ish and giggles and don't know people post trauma. Stop playing with me, please. Okay. I feel like you don't mind me ignoring it. The worst is gonna get. The worst is gonna get. Because you kind of ignoring it and showing a little bit of guilt, one especially if you did nothing wrong. But I really feel like it's more of a legal issue as to why she's not saying anything directly in regards to anything. But like I said in my past video, stop doing those little funny, oh, we're going to be outside. Like, come on, you know what you're doing. Like, stop doing that. She has the liberty to post what she wants, but I feel like she's being funny about it. Like, it's not funny. Like, that's the problem I feel like that Young Miami is doing. That's why people are feeling the need to troll her, which I don't think people should troll her either because y'all trolling her ain't going to make nothing happen. The feds ain't going to come any quicker, okay? They move at their own pace. You see how long it took for them to raid that Melba. They could have been raided him after the Cassie thing. They had to gather, gather evidence. So I just think trolling her is a waste of time, to be honest. The fact that she has this type of trauma, though, is shocking because I wouldn't guess that just from, you know, seeing JT out and about. Now, also, Tyree spoke out about it and very, you know, in Tyree's fashion, very tearfully. <sighs> Some of these celebrities speaking about Diddy as if he lend them money. Did he give you a loan? Like, some Diddy must have been giving out loans because the way they speak about this man as if he was a beacon of light in our community, <laughs> which damn well he wasn't. Okay? Music, he got us turning up, don't get us wrong. But he wasn't a big beacon of light inspiring generations to build wealth. He had niggas running outside to get cheesecake on his show. Like, let's not do the, oh, my God, story. Now, if this was somebody of great magnitude that actually, you know, built up communities that was being brought down, I think a lot of people would feel a lot more sympathetic than what they're feeling towards him. Now it seems like there's so much shit coming across our timelines that we just don't care anymore. We don't care. So I don't want anyone to confuse me for, I mean, last night before I went to sleep, I was praying. I found myself praying for Diddy's kids I was thinking about Justin and Christian Combs and thinking about the twins who go to school with my daughter. Um, they, My daughter and his twins have been at pretty much every birthday party. And then I'm just thinking to myself, see, a lot of people will go after Diddy, beat him down for whatever he's either did or being accused of, uh, allegedly. Uh, and And then it's all about him, right? And I was thinking about the family. I was thinking about the kids. I was thinking about now it seems like there's so the stress of yesterday I went home and all of a sudden I'm in handcuffs at the house. It's 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 just trying my best to see things through the lens of the kids, not just him specifically. And then I wanted him to know, regardless of what he's being accused of and going through, as Minister Louis Farrakhan said, when a man is down, don't laugh at him. Don't make a mockery of him. Don't beat him down. Don't beat him down with your words. You don't have to agree with what somebody did. You don't have to even want to be associated with what somebody did. But everybody deserves And he said, what I can't and won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the war shows, the studio sessions. Oh, my God. The most legendary parties. You could have left that out. I'm sorry. 
I know you just said don't laugh at the man, but really, no, this ain't the time to bring up a party. Like, you could have stopped in events I've attended in my life. And I also can't act as if my high school backyard parties through South Central LA was at the craziest place ever because of the bad boy on slew of hit record. I don't condone nor do I support abuse, bullying, SA, or anything that I that is currently being alleged. But what I can do is turn the blinds on how much this man means to me and all of us and what he has done for the community of music and culture. Don't get me wrong, Diddy's impact on music has been big, but let's not negate the fact that he's also burned a lot of the people that he's worked with musically. And that's a lot of the reason why this whole Rodney lawsuit even came about. Had he dealt, I feel like this is, here's the thing with the Rodney situation. It's tricky to me because it's a little bit of a money grab, but it's also him just being so sick of Diddy's crap that he's telling all of his truth. But had he got his way business-wise, this lawsuit wouldn't have came about. Because if you guys read that GoFundMe, he basically was saying, oh, he's playing, uh, he was basically trying to get some sort of um, deal as in regards to the, the album. And because of this, Diddy wasn't replying back. He wasn't, uh, you know, budging on it. So instead, he just decides to follow a lawsuit and say all of the stuff that he w went through when he was working with him. So that wouldn't have happened had he not tried him business-wise. Y'all get what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, like, let's not forget about that. Now he said, uh, don't worry, I'm the only one crazy enough to jump out there and say what most of you want to say, but you don't have the balls to do so because it's very normal for people to be going through a rough patch and we sit back and make a mockery of it. But I'm not going to do that. I'm praying for Diddy, his kids, his family, his mother, and all the alleged victims that's in the middle of trying to simple, simply have their voices to be heard. I love this brother. He's been nothing but kind and generous towards me, and that's the way I feel, praying and praying more of a better outcome of all this is happening. God bless you, Diddy. If you ever need to call me and need a listening ear, I'm right here, bro. Da, 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 da. To me, that could have been a text message. I, I'm pretty sure you could get in contact with him. That could have been a DM. You letting us know that, it's not going to change anything. Tyrese has done this type of emotional afflicting post before, and it just does nothing. Okay? Now, what bothers me, too, with this whole situation is people getting mad at people speaking out now. If y'all go have that same energy, get have that same energy for Drake, Bell. Why didn't you say something then? He was a kid. He was scared. So I hate when, pe when people are coming out with stories like that, then they're like, oh, you should have said something then. Then say that for everybody. That applies to every situation then, because they should have said it then too. Drake should have said it then too, right? Amanda should have said something then too, right? Now, the TV personality, uh, Teray basically spoke about uh, an incident that happened with his family. Uh, apparently, Diddy wanted him to sleep, wanted one of his family members to sleep over. They denied that request, and then the internship ended after the request was denied for him to sleep over. Many years ago, okay, I... I... I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I call him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said yes. And they were flying around one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member like well, what happened and they wouldn't say yeah and i'm like what what do you why did it end he wouldn't yeah. say and years later they finally came out and this is a male yeah and said that uh puff had said come home stay the night with me or the internship is over Ooh. and they said absolutely not he said absolutely not uh and the internship ended 
Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like this is this is how it goes. OK, yeah. OK. Stopped abruptly, like three or four months. She, he wanted to hit that Alyssa Edwards. All right. So bad. <laughs> this is the type of stories that doesn't make him look any better. Um, I don't feel like this is anything made up either. Uh, who knows what he wanted to do with him after he had him stay the night. So, like I said, if y'all going to say that for him. Keep that same energy for the Nickelodeon kids. And I do believe we as uh, the black community, we need to talk a lot more about when white people commit these offenses also. That's why I made it adamant. So y'all can't even sit here and, and say, oh, you're a hypocrite, Pierre, because you didn't know. That's why I made it adamant to talk about this quiet on set situation because all of the people that were the predators were white. That's why I did the after show. That's why I did multiple videos on videos and videos. They have they drop a new episode. I'm gonna do a recap on that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to do an after show on that if y'all want to. Like, I feel like the energy should be kept all around. It doesn't matter what race, color, breed, whatever. That's just what I think. Okay. Now let's get to something a little funnier. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> So Akbar, okay, has some things to say about Bobby because Akbar feels like Bobby runs his mouth too much on the gram, okay? So at first it started off with this post, and it's this rapper. I, I hate when Neighborhood Talk and some of these blog duties promotional posts, like y'all really got money to waste because that's, damn, give it to me. I'll put it to use. I promise you, there's a rapper by the name of Nessa, Nessa Scary. Nessa Scary. Nessa Scary. We're going to just call her Canary, okay? Canary uh, did a rap, and one of her raps, she's dissing Megan Thee Stallion because she feels like she copied her rollout and basically stole her style. Uh, let me ride this little horsey, giddy up, giddy up. Y'all didn't cast up her head, and now she running them up. Running them she up. was naked. Candy from Love and Hip Hop sounds better than her. I just don't get how you're going to promo a diss when we don't even know who you are. So, of course, I had the same opinion that Bobby did. I roll. Neighborhood Talk, also, y'all got to be a little, y'all got to have a lot more coops, okay? Stop letting just stuff like that be promo. Y'all got to, uh, just don't take the money sometimes. Come on now. I've never heard of this woman a day in my life. So Bobby put in the comments, child with the eye roll. Next thing you know, <laughs> Akbar felt the need to reply back and said, I'm tired of you. I, she said, I'm tired of you. When I see you, it's uh, you talk so much shit. You hear Billy at punk? Call that punk? Okay, call him the F word, punk. And then Bobby Light said, excuse me, you better do your research, babe. Keep it cute and stay safe. And then Akbar V says, I can't stand that half-face pout. Bobby, he always got something to say, bitch. And then she further went on and had some stuff to say on Twitter, which Bobby replied back and said, hold on, Akbar V. You've been one smart, I can tell. Same way I always got something to say. It's the same way you do the same. You do accept the people you are tired of your itch. You are delusional as hell. You're jealous, bitter ass woman who need therapy. Remember you started with me. Then you threatening me. Why? Because you don't like the comments I make on social media. I don't know you. I don't F with you. So why today you want to poke the rainbow bear? Don't make me post receipts of you, you being on my ass years ago when you another one of your pages back. Move around and find your next target. Because I'm not the mother one. You twisted toe turn. Okay? Now, here's the thing. A lot of these celebrities and stuff get paid to comment on certain posts. That's why. And they're not even sometimes celebrities. They'll be influencers. One of them is like called like Anthony. You always see them in either Neighborhood Talks comments or like Shea Room's comments. Sometimes they literally get paid to post certain stuff like that. So Bobby might want to might be one of those influencers like celebrities that get paid to post on certain posts for promo, so to get engagement for that certain post. So Albar V, that was out of nowhere. 
So Bobby went on and made his own merch. The last time Bobby did this was, was with the uh, Bobby I Love You Purr Boys. And he has his own merch for Akbar called Twisted Toe Turn. And it has a picture of Akbar B's uh, feet doing sign language, okay? <laughs> Spelling punk in feet sign language. Now, this is how you get a good clap back. This is funny. <laughs> and my whole thing is, how did he conjure that up so quickly? Because this all happened in a matter of hours. That's a fast nigga. Goddamn. He ate with that. I ain't gonna lie. He really, really did eat with that. My problem with Albar V is she can't make up her mind. At one point, she's like, oh, I'm gonna stay out of the negativity online. I'm just gonna be a good person. I'm a... Uh, Pro on my music, just focus on my music, et cetera, et cetera. Two seconds later, she like, that bitch Cotty, I'm finna get that bitch Cotty. Yeah, that bitch Cotty taught that shit. Uh, stupid ass bitch, shut up again. Shut up, bitch. Motherfucking Cotty. Yeah. Like, she turns into that. So it's like, don't say you're gonna do this if you're gonna do that. That's the problem with Outbar V. And I feel like her, that, her, the way that she has on social media is always going to cloud people's mind and judgment in regards to anything that she does, whether it regards to music, uh, anything that she tries to promo, it's just going to always backfire. Now, Bobby included this post and said, pre-order now, 100% proceeds go to Child Protective Services. You better lay low, okay? In Whitney Houston words. Now, Albar V also has some more things to say in regards to a Diddy situation, and said, I don't know what Diddy did or what he didn't do, but what I found out more disturbing is how the black community is the only community at his thought, not spare his kids, and nothing more is even trying to spare his big daughters on this internet. Okay? That's the, the part about them uh, babies. Once again, I don't know what is true or not, but this always put my point when I say the only skin color that publicly go against each other is the black people. We don't stick together at all. Now, this is the same Akbar V that was slapping and popping girls on Love Hip Hop. Akbar V, the nerve you, bitch. Really? <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. And that, that adds up. My whole thing is, if you want to say that, at least turn a new leaf. You just be fit on Bobby online. And he wasn't even talking to you. And you had something to say. And rightfully, he had the right to call me an eye roll because everybody thought the same thing. How are you going to be a new artist and come out with a diss? And we don't know who you are as an artist before you diss a new, before you diss a seasoned artist. That doesn't even make any sense. That's like me starting a new YouTube channel and making a video about why I don't like uh, such and such. You just got here. Who are you? He said, now nah, I'm only uh, saying stick together, but with all the BS with the kids are innocent. And they get three off, off of laughing and joking about people pain. But what I do find more disturbing is you never catch them Caucasians going against each other on the internet. They're going to stand and stick together, don't even open their mouth at all. Big Ox City. Y'all may hate this messenger, but y'all know what I'm saying is true. His daughters are in school, and I have a daughter, and I don't wish that pain on nobody because kids are cruel in, in school sometimes. So let's start to do better. Big Ox, not the little way. How about you start with yourself, Akbar? Let's start there, okay? Because uh, Berkeley's his daughter is going to have to go to uh, public school or just be around a lot of kids certain days. She's probably homeschooled. Who, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? She's going to be around kids that are, may bring up Akbar and say, why does that lady keep calling your uh, mom ugly? Why does that lady keep making fun of your mom's face? What's wrong with your mom's face? Is she ugly? Is your mom ugly? You know how kids are cruel. You ain't think about that, Ock. Okay. Uh, next I wanted to get into y'all is Beyonce dropped her songs for her act two and the titles of the songs. And she is remixing Jolene. Now, I have a preview of the song. Okay. For her act too. Instead of Jolene, it's Becky, 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 Becky. Why did you fuck on my nigga? Becky, 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 Becky. Why did you dethrone my big dick nigga? 
Becky, 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 Becky. Why did you fuck on my big nose ass nigga? Okay, we she better change the name from Jolene to Becky because that's the only way it's gonna be good. Because Miley has already redone it, so she needs to put a spin on it that's way different from the song, but still has a little bit of a twang on it. Okay, of course, I'm gonna do an album recap. We will see how this country album ends up going because country ain't really my style. I ain't gonna sit here and cap, it's just not. I'm not out here listening to, to country unless K Michelle drops it, then yeah. But I'm not listening to country like that. Okay, I don't have Carrie Underwood on my on my Spotify. All right, now let's talk Jessica Dime. Okay, the Fountain of Dime. Y'all know how she went off about the men. Okay. Y'all, that video I dropped y'all about her going off about the men, that thing is, I think, almost at 100K. <laughs> so, y'all know how she went off about that TV and how it's at 80K, 84K views. Y'all know how she went off on that TV about how that TV is met, uh, messed with her and how they let her do the reunion. Well, guess what? Jessica Dime is with a new network, the Dosh Network. Okay. Niggas breaking necks, breaking heart. That's for certain. That's for certain. He give me head. That's for certain. That's for certain. He give me bread. That's for certain. That's for certain. He pushed the head. That's for certain. That's for certain. Here's the thing. I'm sick of these networks. I'm not gonna lie to you. All of my timeline is just filled with these bitches thumping and fight. There's a show called House of Fame. Like, come on now. That's what they used to do in high school. Y'all name a show House of Faves, and it's about random people in the house fighting. Y'all couldn't even put a group chat together. Just random bitches fighting. It's sick. Now, I am happy that she found another platform. Do I wish she would have went somewhere else? Yes. I feel like this is a step below for Don Najee. And that's a lot saying that from her leaving out as TV. Say what you want about not as TV, but JT is gonna perform for not as TV. So that means at least something. They have a little bit of merit, even though they ain't shit. Sorry. I just feel like she, she could have, to me, the mint would work better on a network that has a whole lot of backing because I see what she was going for. Okay. I see what she was going for. And season one, as much as you guys talk all that crap about it, I do not think it was that boring. I feel like they had some girls on there that were entertaining. Y'all put Rose, and y'all don't like her, but she dramatic as hell, entertaining. Tenny Key, sh entertaining. Uh, who else? Uh, Black, entertaining. Aya, entertaining. Like, they have a lot of people on there that they put on other shows. So, like, let's not act like it was like a whole bunch of girls that never did any other show after that whole thing. Let's not do that. But this decision, though, I don't know about. I don't have the app. Let me know if y'all do have the app. Um, see, the fact she's putting the season two on there, I hope Dom on the rights to it, girl, because over there, not as TV, you talked about Queen Wig, okay? So Queen might try to get some revenge if you don't own the rights to the show and block you from putting it on your on that network. And also, t -Low, come here, nigga. You need to start making these bitches sign not competes, nigga. On my cell, as y'all say. Because them girls network hopping and never... Let me pepper with never. I'm sorry. You got to be a little bit more selfish. I know you're trying to be nice and, you know, let them have freedom and do what they may because, you know, them, your cast is crazy. The cast that you have is a little bit insane in the membrane, so you don't want them coming to the, the offices trying to blow up the offices because they can't go to other networks. But still, nigga, they got to at least have a seven-month non-compete if it's not a year. Because them girls just be going from network to network, house to this, house to that, squabble up, train to go, squabble up, net, uh, show. So make them hoes on... Because... <laughs> look, look what happened. Look. Now they're going to get all your views to that network. But that's a little bit of karma. because Okay? So congrats to Domino for finding a new home because she does seem happy with her decision. But we'll see how it will end up 
working. All right. Also, you guys, Marcus Jordan replied back to Larsa Pimpin. If you guys uh, remember in yesterday's video where Larsa Pimpin talked about their breakup. Now, he said, I was a boy last night. Rewriting history for clout is not cute. Funny how people change just to be a part of a conversation that's irrelevant. And he said, why give Shadi a heart when she rather have press? Ah, that's that nerve. That's the black coming out of <laughs> You know he turned a little whitewash when he got with Larsa. Uh-huh. <laughs> that black is seeping back out. All right. I really thought they were going to last. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, they really did seem madly in love. And, like, the way he was right for her at the reunion, he seemed like he wanted to squabble for her. So, like, if that didn't show you anything, I think Larsa effed up with this decision, to be honest. I feel like they should they could have went to therapy or something. I really feel like he wrote hard for it. Because I'm telling you, him watching them tear her to shreds at that reunion, you could see him getting livid. That shows he actually cares about you deeply. Because a nigga who would, didn't care about you, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get so mad at somebody, at other women especially, going at your girl. It'd be different if it's another man. Of course, your man would have to. But other women, that's what women do. And you could tell he was just mad. Like, he was like, ooh, don't mess with her. Like, I don't know. I think Larson screwed up with this one. You should have stuck it out, Bookie. Like, congratulations to Camila from Long Beach, okay? <laughs> y'all know I like saying that. Camila from Long Beach. She, y'all, is now on House of Villains. You guys already know the, the cast was sort of rumored that she was going to be on the cast. And she is on the cast, y'all. And look, the kangaroo pouch is no more. Roly poly, eat your heart out, bitch. Uh-huh. I know you somewhere mad. Because that kangaroo pouch is gone. Flat as can be. Okay? Flatter than slim. Okay? She looks really, really good. I saw some people in the comments say she looks older. I think it's just the makeup that makes her look a bit older. But body-wise, T, hair, T. So congrats to Camila for doing it. Some of the cast includes these people. We have Wes from The Challenge, one of the biggest dicks on MTV. I couldn't stand his ass when I was younger. Uh, he just gives me very much Trump vibes. Um, so MAGA. You know what I'm saying? But we'll see. We have Teresa from Housewives of New Jersey. I'm excited that she's on there as well because we all know Teresa's a little bit delusional. So she's going to give us good TV. We have Jesse from Big Brother. I don't care. Nobody said he's not a villain. He's a character. There's a difference. Y'all should have had Evil Dick on there. I don't know if they asked Dick or if he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want people throwing his status um, in his face. But Evil Dick should have been there. Because if y'all know, Evil Dick is uh, HIV positive. So I don't know if he's not wary of doing shows because, like, they're going to be like, oh, especially with a show like this. Because I feel like this season, they're going to play hard. They're not going to they're not gonna play nice. Like, Because I feel like last season, it was so, like, they were so nice with each other. Like, it felt, like, a little scripted a little bit. And I don't think this season's going to be like that. I think, like, they're going to be really out for blood. We have Richard Hatch from Survivor. If y'all remember him, uh, he was, no, yeah, he wasn't on last season. He uh, was like a dick on Survivor. He looks a lot older. We have Victoria Larson from The Bachelor. I don't watch The Bachelor, so I don't know who the hell she is. And Larsa Lima from 90 Day Fiance. I don't watch 90 Day Fiance, so I don't know who she is either. I saw in my comments when I talked about her last time that uh, she's, I guess, really, like, good and iconic. They should have had Larissa from Flavor Love. Why y'all didn't have Boots to compete with New York? Because New York's coming back this season. That would have been iconic. We could have got a reunion. But it's because Boots, she don't know how to work with people. She'll do all these interviews talking about Flavor Love this, Flavor Love that, but you can't do other, do other shows. That's all I'm saying. Uh, we have Candy Muse from Drag Race. Now, this is going to be interesting because Candy, is Candy going to be in Geesh all season? Because that's going to be a hard task, bitch. Them challenges, they audit, sometimes they physical. So you're going to be sweating your wig out. Because Candy's not a T-girl. Candy just does drag. There's like, y'all got to know the difference. 
She's not a T girl. So like out of drag, you know, Candy goes by him, he like he's a boy. So how you gonna do this, Candy? I just wanna know. I'm I'm so interested in this season because I gotta see. And of course, Camila and then uh Tiffany coming back. And then I which I'm very excited about because New York they voted her way too soon last season. Like they cheated New York like quick out that show. We have Safar so from Love Hip Hop Atlanta. And that's about it. Okay. They really should have put Amala La Negra in there to throw a little bit of spice on there to make it a little bit more messy. Get into you guys. One last thing I wanted to get into you guys, uh, Gabriel uh, Iglesias, if y'all don't know, AKA Fluffy, because I think he's freaking hilarious. Uh, he's a stand up comedian and he played a little bit on um, all that. And he talked about his experience a little bit with Nickelodeon. And I felt so bad because I did something similar to what he's describing. And I'm gonna explain after. Running out there onto the set, the set had a bunch of beams going across it. And because I'm wearing a wig, it has a bangs. I couldn't see the beam that was going oh across it. And so I'm running top speed and I knock myself out on the set of all that. I wake up and there's a fireman standing over me. Oh. The ambulance and everything is there. They put me on the stretcher and, and they take me to a hospital there in Hollywood. They're, they're doing MRIs, you know, an MRI on me and it turns out I had a concussion. Damn. Here's the part that I have a problem with now that I'm an adult and I kind of get it. They had sent someone to the hospital to make me sign a bunch of stuff saying that, mm, that it was my fault that they're not responsible. <gasps> they made me sign paperwork so that I wouldn't come after anyone. And, and then they didn't bring me back for the next season. What? No one stood up to say, hey, is he okay? It's the us. most important thing was make sure he signs those papers. Yeah. That's, that's you, why when people say, well, all that, yeah. I'm like, hmm. being on the show was fun. Right. The way that I was uh, treated at the yeah. end, yeah. that's the part that I was. So the reason why I say this is something similar is because uh, when I was the GM at Domino's, <laughs> this is so sick. Uh, this one of the drivers had got to like accident or whatever. Mind you, I wasn't there. One of my assistant managers was there. This is why I said I can't wait to drop these story times because it's crazy. Uh, he had gotten like this really, really bad accident. So what we have to do is file like a report. And basically what he said, this is why like some of these companies are corrupt as hell. I He had to sign basically something saying like anything that happens isn't on the account of dominoes that had them sign and everything like that. That way they don't come after the company. So I had to make my assistant manager fill out this huge uh, incident report and have him sign it because he returned back. His car was that bad, but it was banged up. So that way he could sign it. And another incident that happened was one of my drivers got bit by a dog. I'm talking my skin ripped out. She came back bleeding, gushing blood. Skin off the leg. We had to call an ambulance. Had her sign a report. These companies I'm telling is more corrupt than what y'all think. And I can't wait to drop these story times. So just, just stay tuned, okay? Leave your comments down below and we're all babies. Ain't no personal thing.